This is contact sheet photography. This is where you sequence a shot in a way to create one cohesive image when you view the film as a contact sheet. And these are trichrome filters. If you shoot black and white film through these filters, you could create color photos after some photoshopping. I made separate videos that go more in depth into these topics, and while I would suggest watching those videos, I can't tell you what to do. So here's a five second synopsis. Little pictures make big picture. Color filters make color photos. So today I'm gonna to be combining these things together and trichroming contact sheets. For my first attempt, I just went for it. I used film I had on hand, which ended up being Broly Retro 400, Ilford HP5, and Kodak Tri-X. And since Retro 400 had extended sensitivity, I might as well just make this an infrared trichrome on top of everything else. Now let's just say there's quite a few issues with this. The first thing I wanna talk about is the shooting process. Here are the relevant pieces of gear. I have my trichrome filters. I use the camera with interchangeable backs, in this case a Hasselblad 500cm. I have three backs, one for the red, green, and blue channels. I use a tripod, but more importantly I use this simple two-way tripod head with degree markings on both the pan and the tilt. I'm pretty sure that a panoramic head would have been much better, but I don't have one because of money. For me, this doesn't have to be too precise, so this is fine. The idea seemed simple enough, shoot the film in a specific order while swapping out red, green, blue filters, but in practice it ended up being extremely tedious and detail oriented. Let me explain. After getting the camera set up, you need to attach the red back. Meter the scene. Attach the red filter. Remove the dark slide. Fire. Advance the film, reinsert the dark slide, remove the red back and the filter, attach the green back, meter the scene, attach the green filter, remove the dark slide, shoot, advance the film, reinsert the dark slide, Remove the green back and the green filter. Attach the blue back. Meter the scene. Attach the blue filter. Remove the dark slide. Fire. Advance. Reinsert the dark slide. Remove the blue back. Remove the blue filter. Move the camera to the next position and repeat 11 more times, all the while not missing a single step. The next thing I want to address is the frame spacing. With this roll, the frame spacing came out looking alright. If you compare the spacing between, say, these frames, you could see that one of them is just a bit wider than the other. And this is normal and within spec, but that also means you couldn't just trichrome the contact sheets. I had to fudge around with the placements of the frames because while these backs have tight tolerances, it's not zero tolerance. I also wanted to show you an example of what acceptable frame spacing looks like, because if we look at some film that came from another back, you might notice a bit of a difference. So when you look at the trichrome output, you could see where the frames overlapped. The next thing I want to talk about is the exposures and the colors. I metered for the middle parts, so as expected, down here was exposed properly, and as we go up, it gets gradually blown out because of the sky. The blue channel has a lot going on. The exposures are wildly different. I shot each color channel with the exact same settings. The way I saw it is it wasn't too dissimilar to how I would have treated a single sheet of 8x10, so I was surprised by how off the exposures came out. But given how much contrast there was between the shadows and the highlights, I definitely think I made a mistake here, and this wasn't the right approach. So I had to normalize the exposures to get something that resembled usable colors, and that should explain some of the color inconsistencies. But I think the infrared look helped mask some of it, but if you look hard enough you could see where I screwed up. Swapping the backs out over and over again was kind of monotonous, and my eyes kind of glazed over. 
and on multiple instances I lost track of where I was, which led me to doubling up or even missing shots. And just for the hell of it, here's what this would look like if I just trichrome the contact sheets without adjusting the exposures or the frame spacing. Another thing I want to talk about is the subtle movements that could affect the image. I use magnetic filter adapters that make filter swaps very easy. The magnets do a good job holding the filter in place, but it requires a bit of force to remove them. So I had to be careful swapping out filters. Swapping the backs out could also cause some shifting, but the biggest culprit by far was advancing the film. If done quickly or heavy handedly, it could introduce a rotational force that can move the camera just slightly. Armed with this knowledge, I went out for a second time and I decided to address the aforementioned issues. First, I sent my backs to get a CLA. That should fix the overlapping frame issues. Next, I stumbled upon a really good deal on this Hasselblad 553 ELX. The biggest difference between this camera and my 500CM is that the ELX has a motorized film advance, which should eliminate some of the subtle movements I mentioned earlier. Next, I decided to shoot the same film stock across the board. And more importantly, I decided to meter each exposure separately. And here are the results. Before I dive into this, let me just say it was cool to be out in the middle of nowhere, only to have that peace and quiet interrupted by the sound of the ELX motor. This required a lot of processing in Photoshop. First, I scanned each frame individually, then I trichromed each segment separately. This involved lining up each frame one by one, and disappointingly, these images weren't perfectly in register because there were still some slight movements, but a lot less than before. I found out that one of my backs had a crooked frame. I'm not really sure what's going on, but it's something I had to deal with. So you could see me rotate the frame and paint out the blank spaces. The next step is to scan in the contact sheets and then trichrome it. The contact sheets are only really used for the rebate edge and to align the strips, so I just ignore the image in the middle. The next step is to bring in the individual trichrome segments and line them all up. I tried my best to match the colors in between the segments and mostly just did basic levels adjustments, and I think I got it close, but I probably could have spent more time adjusting the colors, but I didn't. This is what I ended up with. Also comparing this to my first attempt, the colors were much better across the board. Metering for the individual segments definitely helped. I feel like I'm slowly dialing this in, but this whole process is very time consuming. The shooting itself took about an hour. It was 10 minutes for the hardware setup, 10 minutes to frame the shots, and about 40 minutes just for the shooting. Developing the film took another hour. I could have saved a lot of time if I had one of those big tanks that could develop three rolls of 120 at the same time, but I had to develop it one roll at a time and editing is a huge time sink. I easily could spend way more time editing and just fine tuning the little bits, but it took about an hour just to get a good first pass. And it's a lot of work for this. And this led me to think of ways to make this a little bit easier. You could get this effect without interchangeable backs or really putting in the effort. You just have to shoot the entire RGB sequence on a single strip of film. And since you're going to be photoshopping this anyway, you could kind of cheese it. I didn't shoot three rolls because this is mostly just a proof of concept, but here's a 2x2 two two trichrome contact sheet. It was much easier. You don't have to shoot in any order. You could go from top to bottom, left to right, and vice versa. You could even go middle out if you want, if you're some kind of freak. You'd be less likely to make a mistake, and you're not forced to use a camera with interchangeable backs. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this. I think this goes against the spirit of the whole project, but it does open the door for people who want to try this without it being so cost prohibitive and gear specific. To wrap this all up, this is a fun project. It requires a lot of patience, but it gives a unique look, and I'll definitely be doing it again because apparently I hate myself.